What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how I made the stator of my DIY wind turbine. This is the third video I made so far about this subject. If you haven't watched the other videos, you can click on the annotation. First I laid all the coils on top of a magnet rotor and made sure they were all aligned. These coils consist of 70 turns of 14 gauge enameled copper wire and they are all wound in the same direction. I then glued them to a drywall mesh, but I later used zip ties to hold them together more securely. Next I cut the wires to the correct length, I scratched the enamel with a pair of scissors, twisted the wires together and soldered them. I later used heat shrink tubing to isolate the exposed connections. I soldered the coils in this configuration. Each color represents one phase, so we have three phases with three coils each that are connected in series. The finish of the first coil is connected to the start of the second coil, and the finish of the second coil is connected to the start of the third. This is repeated for the other two phases. In the end we have six connection points, three starts of the phases and three ends. Leaving these connections accessible allows us to switch from start to delta configuration at any point depending on the output voltage that we need. Here you can see me soldering the balls to the starts and ends. Make sure you have a powerful soldering iron to do this, or if you haven't you can use a gas torch. I'm sorry for the shaky clip, but it was quite windy this day. I am now gluing all the coils together, but as I said earlier, I ended up using zip ties. After cutting the mold for the stator casting, I used packaging tape around the rough edges to allow for an easy molding process.
I cleaned all the parts and used a candle to create a thin layer of wax in order to avoid the resin from sticking to them. I then screw the wood panels together, making sure that the screws didn't protrude the surface. I cut the two fiberglass mats and made the holes for the bolts. Here I drilled a hole on the top panel, so air bubbles and excess resin can escape. Make sure you apply wax to the balls and fill the holes on the top panel also with soft wax or Vaseline. I mixed the resin with talcum powder to give it more strength and to allow for better heat conductivity. Make sure you know the working time of your resin. In my case the resin only started to harden about 2 hours after mixing. If I had known this beforehand, I wouldn't have rushed the casting process as much as I did. I started by pouring a bit of resin on the base panel. I then put the first fiberglass mat and made sure it was soaked with resin. I then put the stator on top and filled all the holes and gaps with resin. Then I laid the second fiberglass mat and soaked it removing all the trapped air bubbles. I screwed and clamped the top panel and cleaned the excess resin. I then tapped it lightly with a hammer to make the air bubbles go to the top. I then checked the resistance of each face from start to finish, which should measure about 0.4 ohms. Make sure you also check resistance between phases to detect possible shorts. The next day I demolded the stator using a frowl along the edges.
The whole process took about 10 minutes. The stator had some imperfections on the top side, but the bottom turned out quite good. I sanded the rough edges, cleaned the wax layer and filled the air pockets with resin. I still have to sand the surface and paint it. Cleaning the mold was very easy and satisfying and I can use it for other staters in the future. Unfortunately, I now can only work on this project two days a month at the very best, so please be patient with me. I really am eager to see this turbine producing some nice watts, but I'm just very busy. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you didn't already. If you have any question, make sure you leave it in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer it. Have fun!